Hi, this is Mia. <clears throat> I am slacking off. Alright, okay. <clears throat> Nine o'clock in the morning. I have... I was supposed to wake up, read these. No, it's not hardly any. And... Um... So I did these flashcards I made the other day for homeopathic, um neonatal homeopathic GI disturbing remedies um, and then I also found out in class that we need to go back to jaundice homeopathic and this teacher's test the homeopathics was my hardest um, it, it, it's kind of because I, I don't know like in homeopathy it's like know this know this know this but in another class then you add homeopathy, it's like, uh... Actually, I gotta order some herbs. You can get a discount if you're still a student. I'm gonna have to do it this week. I had, like, a wish list order. I don't know if it got saved. You ever, like, say, like put something on your computer or phone from a store, and you think... It's being saved, and then like you you shut off the web page, or the computer shuts off the web page, and then it's like, dude, like end up using your list, and you're like, oh shoot, I can't recreate this. Does that mean I don't know? Some of the sites like you go back with the same device, it it just populates it, and some of them you stay logged in and. But I don't know, it's kind of disturbing sometimes. So that, usually it's like, well, if I didn't buy it, then uh, it's like window shopping. It's like, oh, I didn't have the money for it anyway. But sometimes you just want to. Or more later and just be like, okay, now I can purchase it. And I only really like to purchase things for the house that we need food and toiletries um, and uh, herbs. Did I say that? Supplements, herbs. <laughs> And I've got, um, I got, like, I have a problem. Ten years ago, I refused, well, actually, take that back. I took only Chinese herbs. And I actually was taking tinctures about ten and a half years ago. But I stopped because I didn't want the alcohol. My personal preference, I did not want the alcohol. And then somebody got me on multis for the first time. Multivitamins and vitamin C. <clears throat> in 2004, so I was taking that when I had I had been malnourished and homeless, and I was homeless when I was taking those. We were actually in a shelter. They locked everything up as pills. I feel like any medicines had to go in the closet. And I'm like, these are just supplements. And I remember my kids got they had didn't have any insurance, so they didn't have any vaccines. Partly because I didn't want them, and partly I did want them. I wanted them later because I wanted to travel around the world, and I didn't, like, I have a friend who travels around the world, she has no vaccines, but I wanted my kids to be running around barefoot in some jungle somewhere, and I was like, I don't have anything against the people and all that, but like, tetanus and diphtheria and all this stuff that goes around some current countries, and I, even our own country, measles and all that, like, I didn't do their vaccines until they three and five. Yep. Starting, one of them started when they were baby, but it was too much to handle. Um, and we're like, oh, babies don't remember this trauma, but I could see the difference between how they act and how pure the kids are, and e then even how sensitive they become to artificial things when they are 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 not exposed to certain traumas early on or certain toxins. Anyways, so I was waking up, supposed to study, and then we had brought in which I found out online. This it was the Sonder brand, which I don't like. I found out this and it was in the car since Sunday. And it stinks like particle board and toxins. Like I have a sore throat from it. 
dry, scratchy throat. I have like a cold. Although, <coughs> something at work is sick, but it, it, I don't think it's helping. My kid has a cold, and I'm not upset. I'm like, it's got to be part And then I would like fill the air filter. I had one small air filter downstairs, which is like 600 square feet. And I was like, dude, I need more. I need more air filter. So I had two carbon filters I had to put in. I couldn't find them, and I finally found them the other day, yesterday, last night. So I plugged the. <laughs> there's like two air filters. There should be, there should be a big one in the front part of the downstairs and one in the kitchen part of the downstairs. That's all there is. Is the front part of the downstairs. It's like one open area. Actually, it's it feels so cramped. It, it always feels so cramped, and the people want to know. They thought we'd get out of the car like last night or Monday, or Monday night, and we didn't. They're like, do you want the other one? Is pounds. The guy at whatever, he put two pieces of cardboard. We put a blanket down on the car, on the bottom of the car, and two pieces of cardboard. And so that we could slide everything. I think he put the garbage to protect it. But then we all we did was slide it onto the sidewalk and onto a chuck, a, a portable chuck thingy. And the portable chuck is not really that big, and dolly chuck handle thing. So we pulled it in. I tried to walk it in, like side to side to side, and then because there's no handles, no way to hold on to the back, is no way to hold. We were trying to get up. Okay, step two. Um, and this guy is little, and he like carry helped us carry it. We're like, oh shoot! I was just thinking, my kid was talking about friction. I was like, oh shoot! I was we should have put it on a cardboard because we have like a hump to get over. I was thinking we could put it on the truck and turn it on its side and wheel it into the house. Like you know how you see people like pulling it up the stairs. I was like, I we didn't have the strength or the space, and then we had, um, the neighbor help us out, it was like a shame, because our house was a mess, we had like, way too much furniture, way too much, everything, it's like, I'm sorry kids, and, um, it's like, too many hobbies, I don't know what the problem is, and then, um, Anyways, I gotta go study. Yeah, we were like, someone said something about the cardboard. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, go get the cardboard. So then we could put it on the cardboard. And then put it across to where we were gonna put it. Because I was like, there's no way we're gonna get it next to the side door. And then we put it next to the side door, and now it's there. So we have, like, now a couch and a another couch and a papasan chair and uh like all this little wooden actual real wooden piece of furniture and so this piece of thing and a kitchen table that doesn't fit exercise bike all in like one small 400 square foot this is stupid this is not gonna work I'm like if our house was twice as big <laughs> it would still be crowded we moved into a place that was bigger and it was stacked to the ceiling with my stuff moved from a smaller place to a bigger place and we had someone stayed in there from the old church it was like if you don't need this now toss it if you don't need this now and it helped a lot but we replaced everything and then somebody here we got in trouble for having stuff stacked with stuff in closets and storage and put it into drawers and clothes and kitchen stuff but when you like don't unpack it right away it's right in the middle of the house so we had tables uh, boxes on it and lots of DVD player and all of the VCR whatever, pull it out, so I always still use VCR, we pull it out of the closet and there was boxes of stuff that I didn't, people packed I didn't really care for, so they were like, I was like, if I put this back in there, it's going to be in there indefinitely. So I left them out and they had this inspection thing and then I got written up having boxes. And I was mad because I was like, we just moved, and I, I'm like a full-time medical school student. I was like freaking out, and so I missed a week of school on Martin Luther King Day and called it um, 
mentors and they called the agency and they, some people came in they threw everything away and they're like no we're not gonna throw stuff away unless we ask you first but they just threw every all this like the one thing that I wanted to save for my mom because she died in 98 was she had got me some books I had a set of books that I think were my brothers just like hardcover books and a set of books got me corduroy and something about jam and so, you know those old books um children's something you get something in the mail every month or whatever for a year and then I also had a collection of golden books just a few golden books and Dr. Seuss that I would still even with back then the kids were s still like 9 and 10 or 11 they were still fairly little and we also had a collection of in a set of they threw stuff away uh, without me looking without me knowing and I was like the one thing I want the least wanted was the books my mom gave me because she passed away and there was like this much of a bookshelf of kids books that I wanted to I continue to read them to my kids and just let them know that that's the only thing they have from their grandma basically that's the only thing they have except for our life <laughs> but I thought you know other people there like get clothes and they get presents and they get Easter baskets and candy and grandma's making this blanket you know but it's like my grandma their grandma died both of their grandmas died that's the one thing I, think I pulled those books out I think we missed some of them I had some um, health food books and some DVD uh, VHS it threw most of the stuff away and it the house echoed and it was kind of panicky and then it, it got to the point I reordered the encyclopedia. I, I spent a bunch of money. I end up with m more kids' books. Another golden book. You know, it was just like, these people helped me. And they were like, oh, these papers, we're going to take them to the shredder. I've seen people that say, oh, I'm going to take it to this. And then you see it on a pile somewhere in the basement or just sitting in the dumpster. So, yeah, I'm going to have someone drive. Like you don't need your bank account information. You don't need your all these check stubs. But it was like you're just kind of supposed to keep that stuff for taxes. So that's part of the reason we got the pile counter. It just take takes up space. You would think well, if you fill your house with furniture and you're able to store your stuff properly, but versus um, versus. Um, I'm sorry, I gotta go. Versus, I mean, my mind is just get rid of this stuff. And but with the taxes and starting a business and having um, potential future home business, uh, my friend, um, my doctor, co a coworker, <laughs> he's not a coworker. This guy who has a home, the office, he gets audited all the time for taxes. And I don't know if he's a sole proprietor or not, but it's like running a home business. He gets audited all the time and has to make sure. And I think, I don't know if his charting gets audited either, but like that. Um, I think to, you have to say something. And I was going to get an archive box. I used to have those big boxes I found out. It's like 10 bucks at the office already. I was going to try to do those archive boxes. Um, for some of the old older stuff, just um, my my mom, my daughter just says take some twine and tie up the papers and st store them somewhere. But it sucks because you have this and you have the school of this thing, and it's like you gotta keep it if you want to do this and turn it in, and it's just like overwhelming. And or else I would just shred all of this stuff and <sighs> the problems with it phone company, you know, there's different electric companies depending on where you live, so it's like, you want to make, save the old electric company papers in case you move, because I've had my wallet stolen three times, social security card stolen um, once or twice, I had computer information from a 
it's from my old housing place, stolen with all my personal information. So then it's like, I'm scared I'm going to move. And then they're going to be like, oh, you can't get electricity here because you didn't pay your bill. And I want to be able to be like, look, here's the only <coughs> address that I lived at where I paid the bill. And this is me. Um, and so I, Because I've, I've had stuff on my credit report that wasn't me. So I kind of wanted to pick myself up. The point is... I'm all about organizing right now, and I have exams. This is just like one week's worth of notes, if even. It might be less than a week. I have to go to class in an hour. We run out of food. We didn't run out of food. That's my son's food. I gotta go. I just wanted to say that I was like trying to put the guinea pig cage away because I put this drawer somewhere, and I end up like not fitting in the closet and like every closet is like stuff is just like sometimes you open up a closet and it's just like bing like you fall this person got like 24 hours a day just to sit around their house and fix things and tidy and vacuum like oh that's what i feel about even i love cleaning and organizing i love it i love scrubbing stuff i love decorating stuff but i also go to school all the time my whole life. I also work all the time since I was a kid and I'm like, this is stupid. I haven't had that like opportunity. Like I did have like three years, three, four years. Three or four years where I could where I did nurse and be pregnant and change baby diapers or be pregnant again and nurse again. There was four years of domestic and I know somebody was like like, before the kids were born, I was domestic, right, when I got married, and I was able to clean so much. I my old room in the house, and he was mad that it was dirty, so he made me, like, get rid of all the stuff, and not, he didn't help me move my stuff to my brother's house. And then my brother was mad because I had all this junk, and then he moved my stuff, and it got flooded. Basically, Then I moved into this new house, which was a fairly good-sized house. It's probably about the same size as the house now. And it was kind of messy, but, I, like, I was into, like, washing walls and washing floors because it was an old house. It was, like, wood paneling. He would get so mad that he would tell me to come and watch TV with him because he was, I was working, cleaning all day, and I was making meals from scratch, making homemade ketchup and, you know, trying to make meals like my, dot, or my mom and having the you know, kitchen table and all this stuff. Um, and like coffee and a bag of chips, you know. So I was like, I was like, why are you making food? Like that's weird. I don't make you lots of food. You know, I ate stuff you could put in the microwave. I think cold beans on a campfire. So what he was used to. Um. And you can't do that when you're living in the city on the streets. So I had to go and pray for me that I can study. Um, I told my kids, I was like, oh, I feel embarrassed that neighbors saw our house because I, like, stacked stuff and moved, shoved stuff just to get this entire driving around with this thing in the back of the car. So I was like, dude, um, I feel bad. I just go to his house. I know his wife is home all the time. And I hear it's, like, beautiful, spe spectacular, and the kitchen is magnificent. And ours are just, like... It's just like living in a uh, storage facility and just having a clean bed and <laughs> going back and forth to work at school and births and stuff. Somebody wants to be on call for births next weekend, and I'm that was like the one weekend where it's like I'm done with school, maybe forever, unless I go back for another program. And then they're like, oh, I see the message, so I'm like, dude. But I won't be able to get my midwifery certificate until I do the number of births that I need. 50 and 100 for Washington State. So I'm like, dude, I should just do it. I should just, I mean, it's either going to be now or later. So I was just, what, I actually had the day off work. I was just wanting to not do anything that weekend and potentially even go out of town. There's a conference on Sunday. I mean, I could maybe set up a tent in my yard and sleep outside. 
I'm gonna borrow somebody's dog. I'm scared to see about there. Actually, yeah, I borrow their dog and I'm gonna poop all over. I'm scared to go out. There's critters. I could go out there and clean out the yard, but if I don't study, I'm gonna not be done because then it's gonna be difficult to pass the final. So, two classes. Um, it's very difficult to study for finals when you just graduated. This is my 12th year of school, 12th year, 12th year of full-time or and or half-time school. Too much. And I had no breaks in the past two and a half years. Uh, even though the doctors I shadow always go on vacation, even if it's short weekend trips. I'm not going anywhere. It's a reverse into <laughs> into people's houses. Which is good because we don't have friends or relatives, so we don't have anyone's house to go to. So, that's where I am right now. I gotta go. I gotta get my kids food. So, accountability team. I did talk to someone about a clinic that the only person who's in contact that I'm going back to, that I have like to fax it them today, like right now. I feel my my mind is like take a leap of faith in my my thinking part of my mind is like, dude, the teacher said don't just sign something just because it's your friend. Make sure you agree to all the terms of the lease before you do anything like that. So that's where I am right now is trying to secure a spot somewhere versus and it's three months so I could three months just follow the lease for what it says and then it, after three months they might not let me stay there or they may update it um so part of me is just like if you keep stalling like the like i can't hire a lawyer i don't have the money to hire a lawyer to go over the lease and to help change it and i that's where i'm struggling with it's like you might just have to go for their terms and then if i want to do something in addition to something else I'll just do that outside very in high demand for practitioners wanting to work there and it's packed full jammed so I feel better about my skin even my hair looks it looks like silkier um this is actually silk but my hair looks silkier and it's still overweight by 21 pounds um or like 11 pounds and I'm trying to do all raw so today's accountability food team club is I busted out the royal jelly, and I had a royal jelly in a cap, and the big thing, I had a small thing, and I was trying to refill the the small one with the big one so that I could do it fresh. Every time something falls out of our fridge, because it doesn't, the wires, it falls over. Every time I do that, it the tops break. So I, and then I had a rubber band on there. It wasn't as convenient. It was sloppy. It's hard to find. And, and then it ended up. get rid of it using it and I left out all night and I was like put it back in the fridge like oh this is royal jelly it's very important and I was like I was out you're not supposed to leave it out all night so I I had ran on my good cocoa powder raw cocoa powder I'm drinking the one that's kind of gran granular but it's my emergency and it works um it doesn't it's not my favorite but it works because I do the cocoa every day with raw honey um, spring water and now I'm going back to adding royal jelly um, basically because I need to stay on raw and um, be hypoallergenic and that's the only way i found to be hypoallergenic. Uh, so it doesn't work for me for weight loss but it works for me for symptoms and um, and I really need to heal and cleanse from this automobile accident because the symptoms, headaches and stuff is, is so unbearable and I'm scared. I'm I never had this happen. These injuries, I'm really sick in my back, in my headaches, in my hands, in my hand, and it's streaky. And I haven't been able to get out as much medical care as I thought. So I had to do what I can on my end.